Hey Frontline, this is Val again. How's it going? Uh, I want to spend some time today talking about the myths about HIV transmission, and there are a lot of them. Uh, if HIV were as easy to transmit as all of the myths make it seem, everybody would have it. And clearly everybody doesn't have HIV, um, and everybody is not going to get HIV. Um, so I want to give you some tools for breaking down myths that you might hear. Because um, it's one thing for me to be able to say this to you, it's an entirely different and more powerful thing for you to be able to say this to somebody else. So there's f kind of four main myths that I want to look at today. Mosquitoes, eating after someone or utensils, drinking after someone, um, and toilet seats. So we're actually going to do this in uh, a bit of reverse order, um, but first a review about HIV transmission. Okay, HIV is only transmitted f through four body fluids, um, blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. That's it. That's all. Um, and not only do those body fluids have to uh, have HIV in them, they also then have to get into somebody else's bloodstream. Um, and HIV doesn't pass through unbroken skin. In fact, the skin is the biggest immune system organ that the body has. It does a really good job of keeping out germs. That's just, that's one of its big jobs, and it does it good um, almost always. So there are three ways that HIV can pass into a bloodstream. One is direct blood-to-blood -blood contact. What we're really talking about there is shared needles um, or other like needle stick um, or shared razor, something that goes directly from one bloodstream to another. Um, we're talking about open cuts, sores, or lesions. Um, and here we have a kid who skinned their knee, right? So that would be a place right there that um, blood could get in. Although it is important to say that if there's blood coming out of the wound, that's actually going to prevent other stuff from getting in. Um, and if it gets cleaned up good, that's how we prevent infection, um, you know, like the the red raised flesh around a wound sometimes is an infection um, just of bacteria. We want to prevent that anyways. Um, so, um, but this is one way that HIV can get into the bloodstream. The third way is through soft um, mucosal membranes. And so these are things that are like skin but are more permeable. Um, and so the example here, the picture, is of a uh, throat, right? But then this includes vaginal walls, anal walls, inner cheek walls, tonsils. I could also include uh, the the mucous membrane that's on the inside of your eyelids or up your nose. Those are all places that are like skin, but not exactly. It's a bit softer than skin. So, and one thing is that's true is that when your mucosal membrane, your uh, vaginal wall or penile wall or anal wall has an open cut sore or lesion on it, like from a, another sexually transmitted infection like syphilis, um, that it has the risk of this plus the risk of this. It's not one or the other, it's actually both. So that increases the risk of HIV transmission. So let's look at some common myths here. Why isn't HIV transmitted by toilets, by utensils, by shared cups or soda cans, or by mosquitoes? Well, first, toilets. All right, obviously they're not the cleanest place in the universe, but if, uh, if HIV was transmitted by toilet seats, it would be a totally different disease. Um, here are, for any myth that you encounter, here are two, the I think two, important questions. What body fluids are involved there? What's the entrance to the bloodstream? Okay, so with this, with toilet seats, you're unlikely to sit down on a bloody toilet seat. The body fluids that are involved are more likely piss and shit. Um, and if there's a bloody toilet seat that you see, most people are not going to just then sit down on it. Of course, if it happens at 3 a.m. and it's in your house and you're asleep, not, I don't look at the toilet seat in those times. But how how likely is that? Also, if you do sit down on a bloody toilet seat, um, or a toilet seat that has cum on it, or vaginal fluids, or breast milk, rarest of all, 
it's not your mucous membranes that connect with the seat. Um, and um, so it's unbroken skin that connects with the seat that's going to sit down in the blood. And it's not like that is being ejaculated into your mu mucous membranes or against your mucous membranes. It's static there on the seat. So I feel like this is a really gross topic, but um, I'm happy to be talking about it with you because I am a treatment educator and I like this kind of stuff. Um, you are not going to get, no one is going to get, there's never been a recorded instance of anyone getting HIV from a toilet seat. and. Um, this is one of the places where people go to worst case scenario at all times. Well, what if I did sit down on a bloody toilet seat because I didn't see it and I wiggled around and it got in my system? It's like, that's just not going to happen. Um, uh, it has never happened in history. So for any myth that you're trying to break down for your own self, these two important questions, what body fluids are involved and what's the entrance to the bloodstream are going to be necessary for you to ask and um, figure out the answers to. So next up, shared utensils. Okay, Again, what body fluids are involved and how would it get into the bloodstream? Sharing utensils is more likely to transmit common colds, the common cold or cold sores or other things that are transmitted in saliva. HIV is not transmitted in saliva. And if somebody is jabbing a fork into their the gum of their cheek so there's blood on it, you're probably not going to eat off of that fork. Um, the, these, All of these myths are places where people with HIV are discriminated against when they don't have to be just out of ignorance um, and just out of hatred. Um, and so the the sort of act of, uh, oh, I, I'm going to go to worst case scenario here and give you a styrofoam plate. You're living with HIV. You're a guest in my house. I don't want to hurt my family, so I'm going to give you a styrofoam plate um, is some of the most hurtful stuff that happens. Obviously, there's there are things that you can do to someone who's living with HIV who, that's more hurtful, but that's one of those everyday things that really not just gets under the, someone else's skin, but but really undermines their sense of what it means to be human and what it means to be in our communities. So again, what body fluids are involved? Just saliva. That doesn't transmit HIV. Next. All right. Shared cups and soda cans. Same question. What body fluids are involved and how would it get into the bloodstream? Again, it's just saliva here. And if somebody cuts their mouth on a sharp edge, other people are not going to finish that beverage, right? That it just doesn't happen. Um, last one that I want to talk about in this um, is mosquitoes. Um, and we have a couple buzzy little guys there. Mosquitoes do have contact with blood. Um, and it's important to understand that that's their food. They're not trying to spit that blood out into anybody else because they need that food in order to carry on their life cycle. Um, and when they get blood in their system, they digest it. They break down what's in there. Um, and they don't have CD4 cells. Um, so when they're, when a mosquito, let's say a mosquito bites someone who's HIV positive, um, the they insert a venom into the person that they've landed on um, to sort of numb the point of injection of their little proboscis, their little nose jerk. Um, and so the venom comes out and goes into the skin of the person. Um, and it, that's what eventually most people usually react to that causes itching and swelling. Um, but it also, like I said, it prevents, it, includes swelling so it actually makes this hole disappear once the mosquito has gone. So if you whap a mosquito on your arm and it causes a spot of blood and you don't know where that spot of blood comes from, it's still not going to get into your body because that hole, because of the venom, is all swollen up. Um, and I mentioned this before, but they don't have the same immune system cells that humans do and HIV can't reproduce in their bodies. So if this mosquito has HIV in its belly, 
it digests it. Um, that that HIV can't get anywhere. It doesn't then go into mosquito blood, and then the mosquito blood gets into you. It doesn't happen. Um, so those are the uh, majority of things I wanted to say. I want you to contribute to our forum on other myths and see if you can break them down yourselves. Uh, take care. Talk to you next time. <laughs>